I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Well, it's Rhyme of Praise time, and we are glad you're here with us. Yes. And it's going to be a great program today because I'm not speaking. <laughs> she is. Oh, she is my. talking about her, the thing that she loves the best, and it's her passion, and it's prayer. It's called Keep the Fire Burning on the Inside of You. So uh, I didn't preach it. You did. You tell them about <laughs> it. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, all this month we, we've been talking about the rain. We've been talking uh, about uh, spiritual gifts uh, for them to move in our midst. We've yes. been talking about revival. Well, in order for the move of God to come, you know, we have to prepare ourselves. And uh, revival, all, prayer always precedes Revival. Yes, yes. And yes. so uh, we have to keep that fire burning on the inside of us. We have to uh, have a desire uh, to want to have revival. And so yes. many times we fill our life with our own schedule. Right. And uh, we don't realize that God has a schedule for us. Right. And so it's important to be sensitive to the things of God. In order to do that, we've got to prepare ourselves. So I want to ask you, how hungry are you for the things of God? So let's go right now where I'm talking about keep the fire burning on the inside of you. And so this afternoon, I want to talk about keeping that fire burning on the inside of you. Keeping that fire burning on the inside of you. You know, in the natural, we have to keep that fire burning. We have to keep, you know, another word for that might be passion. But we have to keep on a job. You know, after a while on a job, the job can become a little mundane, right? You may get bored with the job. You're not as enthusiastic about the job as you were when you first got it. You know, and so many times when that happens, I see people do this all the time. They think, well, I guess it's time for me to change jobs. Yeah. When so many times that's not the case. They change jobs and they, uh, you know, get out of what God really had for them. They don't realize they need to change. Yeah, that's good preaching. They need to change instead of trying to change jobs. You got to keep the fire that you once had for that job. You got to be enthused about the job. Yeah. You got to be enth you better be enthused about the fact that it's paying your bills. It's giving you food. And you need to pray for your employer. Yeah. Because it's their provision that's giving provision for you. So you got to keep the fire burning in, in the natural. You got to keep the fire burning when you're married. Yeah. Pastor and I have been married. We're actually going on our 54th year of marriage. You know, after 54 years, if you're not careful, you can just... Uh, quit appreciating each other like you should. Yeah. You know, you're laying in bed trying to go to sleep and he's snoring so loud. <laughs> that you're irritated. Yeah. Well, you know, I read the story of one lady and she... Uh, actually, this lady was complaining to Dear Abby in the column. It's, they don't have that. Oh, she, Dear Abby died. But anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, the lady 
lady was complaining about her husband snoring, she couldn't sleep, and this other lady wrote in and said, I wish that I could hear my husband snore again, because he had passed away. Yeah, in marriage, you know, you got to keep that fire burning. You got to keep that passion burning. How do you do that? Well, you do the first. Do you remember when you first got engaged? Do you remember when you first met your husband? Yeah. It was quite a meeting for Pastor and I. I will always remember <laughs> our meeting. Some of you know our story. We, I just shortly say we've been writing letters and because uh, he was in the military and we'd been writing letters for several months and he got out of the military and he came to knock on my door because we were going out and meeting for the first time and I just knew in my heart and he knew in his heart that when he saw me, we thought that we were, um, we thought that we loved each other, we thought we were going to get married, but I knew that when I saw him, I would know that it would be confirmed in my spirit and and he knew the same thing, though we never told each other that. But whenever he, he rang the doorbell and opened the screen door, and I opened the wooden door to say hello, I never got to see him because he grabbed me and he kissed me. <laughs> yeah, he's back there listening. <laughs> Unless he's snoring. So when I finally did see him, I knew he was the one. <laughs> so that meeting, you know, will forever be in my mind. But, you know, I refer back to that many times to keep that passion, to keep that passion on the inside of us. Well, you know, the same is true in our spiritual life. The same is th true about serving Christ. We need to keep that passion on the inside of us. You know, I, I honestly really don't remember when I got saved. I do remember at four years of age going to the altar, so that means I know that at least I've been saved, though I'm only 50, I've been saved 70 years. Yeah. And you know, as a teenager, I would hear, you know, somebody would be a, a get saved, be a new Christian, and I would hear the old saints, as I would call them, say, well, after a while, they'll settle down. Well, you know, I didn't have a knowledge of the word as I do now, but that did not register good in my spirit. In fact, even... That at that time as a teenager, I thought, I'm never going to settle down. I'm never going to settle down. I am always going to keep my joy and my enthusiasm and my fire for God. So we do not need to settle down. There was a story about an atheist, an atheist lived in a certain village. He was not a terrible person. He just had no interest in going to the boring traditional church that was the only one in the village. One day, the church building caught on fire, and the whole town ran toward it to help extinguish the flames, including the village atheists. Someone called out, hey, this is something new for you. It's the first time we've ever seen you running to the church. He replied, it's the first time I've, I have ever run to the church because it's the first time I've ever seen the church on fire. Sad but true sometime. We, as the church of God, should bring fire to the church. We are the fire. This church is a place where people should see Jesus. They should want what we have. But so many times, as Anthony said, you know, they're frowning. As Christians, we're frowning, we're irritated, we're not happy. Well, why would somebody want to be like that? 
I've just always made it a practice to smile. You know? Because I know that it, sometime my feelings are going to catch up with my smile. Yeah. Yeah. And another reason I smile, I've been on the other side and I know what it looks like to look out at people that are not smiling, you know. But if we're going to experience the fire, if we're going to walk into the power and presence of God, then we must do something about it. We must stir up the fire. Let's turn over to 2 Timothy 1.6. I want to read this in the Amplified. 2 Timothy 1.6. And of course, Paul was admonishing Timothy, giving him instructions. And he said, that is why I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. I mean, obviously, uh, Paul had experience to know that at some time, you know, Timothy was going to experience the experience that maybe the fire was getting a little low. And so he encouraged them, you got to stir it up yourself. You got to stir it up yourself. You know, I believe that we are in the last days. I believe that these are the days that were spoken of by Joel who said over in Acts 2, 17, he said this, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's time, guys. It's time for a great outpouring of the Spirit of God. You know, there's been great outpourings in the past. But it was prophesied by my father-in-law back in 1983, April of 1983, 36 years ago, I want to read this prophecy. I think that it will help you to understand what we're about to experience in these days. He said, in this move, in this move, in this move that's about to come, it will not altogether be something new that you've never seen. It'll be a combination of everything you've seen put together plus a little bit more. In this move of God that is just about to spring upon you, there will be manifestations of casting out demons that you haven't seen yet. Now some have drawn back from casting out demons and the Spirit of God said, I began a move along that line a few years ago and we remember that in the 80s. And men aborted the move. They mixed some of their own thinking in on it and they tried to control it and do it according to pattern and according to this way that we think it ought to be done. But you haven't seen anything yet of what you're going to see in dealing with demons. And I believe there's a lot of demonic activity out there. How about you? Yes, even in the United States of America. For demons are let loose upon the earth. They're going about as never before because they know their time is short. And so in this multiplication, this advance of demon activity, there will be the activity of the Holy Ghost. Demons that have harassed men, demons that have held ministries in check will leave. And you have not seen yet what you will see in the area of dealing with demons, casting out demons, exercising authority over demons. And you're about to step into it like you'd step through a door into another room. And secondly, saith the Spirit of God, you have not seen the revival of divine healing that you're about to see. Oh yes, you saw those that I raised up. You've seen men and women mightily used of my spirit. 
I sent them forth as a pilot program to try to train you, but many just looked at them and lifted them up, and some of them were lifted up in pride, and the anointing left them. And some became money-minded and lost the anointing. But there will arise, and I believe this group, it says, a group in this day that's a brand new breed. They'll not be greedy of filthy lucre. They'll not want to attract attention unto themselves. They would care less whether God uses me. They'd rather God would use you. And God will not just use ministers. He'll use laymen. And there will be a revival of divine healing such as you have not seen in your lifetime or read about or heard about, saith the Lord. And a revival of the supernatural, not only the supernatural in casting out devils, not only the supernatural in healing the sick, not only the supernatural in speaking with other tongues, but the supernatural in the realm of the seen realm. Men will see the glory of God. A cloud will hang over certain congregations, even the church building, for days at a time. And everybody that passes by, sinner and saint alike, will say, well, what in the world is that? I've never seen anything like that. And there will be in other places fire of the Spirit that will actually become literal. Oh yes, in the Spirit realm, some of us have seen it. In the Spirit realm, we've been conscious of the fire of God. But the fire will actually come into manifestation. And there will be people, sinners as well as saints, that will see fire all over the heads of the people. There will be people driving down the street or down the highway and they'll see fire on top of the buildings. And they'll come and say, what? What does all this mean? But you see, the Lord will use signs of his presence to bring people in the last days into the fullness of his spirit and into full salvation. Miraculous things in the realm of the spirit. But the greatest miracle of all is that there will be so many fish caught in the net that the nets can't hold them. There won't be church houses enough to hold the people. For the purpose of it all is that you may be fishers of men. Quit fishing in your bathtub. There's not any fish in your own bathtub. Go out where the fishes are and throw out the net. Not the hook, the net, and pull it in. And the glory of the Lord shall shine, and the end time shall come. And you'll stand in the place, yes, many of you that stand here will stand in the place of ministry that you've not stood in before. And will stand in the place that's been ordained for you from the foundation of the earth. And if it could be told you, if we were able to tell you in human language that which will transpire in some of your lives, your mind would not be able to comprehend it. But you'll see it. You'll rejoice in it. You'll be glad in it. It's just out there a little ways in front of you. Be faithful, be joyous, and rejoice in the Lord always, and He will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I firmly believe that we're just right on the edge of that Holy Ghost fire moving in our midst. Moving in our midst. However, in order to receive it, we must prepare for it. We must prepare for it. How do, where do we start? That's right. <laughs> we start by letting the hunger for the things of God to begin to consume us. The hunger for the things of God. The hunger. The word says, blessed. Jesus said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For what? They shall be filled. They shall be filled. Over in Proverbs Uh, 27 verse 7 says, Honey seems tasteless to a person who is full, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. You know, how hungry are you? So many times, you know, uh, food doesn't taste nearly as good when we're not hungry, right? But when we're hungry, everything tastes good. I don't care if it's our favorite thing or not. My husband tells a story of when he was in actually boarding school in in, um, high school. And he's a little picky about what he likes to eat. It's very easy. All he wants is beef, 
and he calls it his vegetables, potatoes, and corn. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't learn very much in the health class about vegetables. But anyway, he tells the story of one time that he was, uh, uh, he was in boarding school, and I guess finances were really uh, short in the school, and he went to the cafeteria to eat, and all they had to eat was cabbage. Well, he didn't like cabbage, and so he didn't eat. And so he thought, well, you know, they'll have something different at dinner. And at dinner, all they had was cabbage. <laughs> and the next day, all they had was cabbage. Well, of course, by this time, he was getting pretty hungry, a growing boy, you know? And so the second night, all they had was cabbage. Well, his story was, I think he ate four plates of it because he was so hungry. <laughs> so even though cabbage wasn't his favorite food or even a food that he liked at all, because he was so hungry, he ate lots of it. Well, we need to get hungry for the things of God hungry for the things of God. You know, when we're not hungry, God can come, God can move, and we will miss it. Yeah. So many times, you know, religious people are prone to that because they want God to manifest himself the way they want him to. The Pharisees and Sadducees were religious people and they had a preconception of how what God was going to bring to them their savior and it didn't come in the form that they thought and so what they do they rejected it for the move of the spirit to come in our day we have got to be hungry we've got to prepare our spiritual life we've got to prepare ourselves to be spiritually sensitive to how God is going to come. How God is going to come and show himself mighty in these last days. I want to ask you, how hungry are you? How hungry are you? In these days, so many times I find that Christians are so full of a natural schedule, natural things that they are not prepared for what God wants to give them. For what God wants to give them. Too many times, you know, we're just packed with just life itself. We're packed with the cares of life. We're too packed with wanting to be successful in life. And there's nothing wrong with being successful in life. And yet, on the other hand, if that success captures more of your time than God, something is wrong about it. So many times, and I know we have ministers here, so many times, pastors, we're so consumed with numbers. We're so consumed with leadership. We're so consumed with church growth that we miss what God has in store for us. I want to just encourage you to keep that fire burning on the inside of you. And you know, if you don't have a passion, ask God for the passion. Yes. I remember, honey, when um, the Lord was changing our ministry, we were yeah. going from uh, right. pastoring and to traveling ministry. Right. And I remember I was honest with God and I said, God, I don't have a passion for traveling. Right. And so if that's what you call me to do, then you have to give me that passion. Right. And you know what? Whatever you ask God, he will give it to you. If that is what he wants in your life, he will give that passion to you. And our, our offer this month for a gift of $29 or more Part one of them is keep the fire burning on the inside of yes. you, uh, and that's your CD. And what you just spoke on was a portion from that's that right. message. That's right. You, they, it couldn't do the whole message no. on the program, but it was a portion of it. So if you'd like to, the whole the whole uh, message, then go 
to uh, and order it. And then uh, last week we showed my dad, Kenneth E. Hagen, uh, a portion of of how to see the spiritual gifts uh, work greater. In a greater measure. And, and, uh, and so that's available. And then my three CDs, our spiritual, our new spiritual realities, talking about who we are in Christ, what we have because of that. Now, all of these, like I said a minute, moment ago, are all available for a gift of $29 or more. And uh, so they're, they're there. Yes. And Somebody said, well, I wasn't, I didn't see last week. I didn't get to see your dad. Well, you can go to rhema.org and go to, and, 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 and you can go there and there'll be a place that you can go and you can re, re-see this. It'll be there. On you know, Rhema Praise. On Rhema Praise, yeah. You can watch on demand, Rhema Praise, right yes. there. So uh, you can know that. Man, on that, on that, uh, on that place, rhema.org, you can go watch video on demand. You can, you, you can see that we have all kinds of the Rhema USA app, iPad, iPhone, Android, Google, Google Play, how to do that. Then all of our live stream stuff. Yes. And then uh, you can read our Word of Faith magazine That's online, right, online. Or you can download it even. That's right. And also there is a daily devotion every day there. Yes. And then there's articles that you can read online. And you can even listen to our uh, radio our, podcast, our podcast yes. of uh, Rhema Today, our radio program. So just, just go there. And also we have a Roku, Roku. channel. We have Rhema USA and uh, Roku. And we have over 60,000 subscribers there yes. on, on Roku. And our services are live streamed on Facebook Live. Yes. As well as YouTube. So right. you can join us live. 10 a.m. Sunday morning, 6 p.m. Sunday evening, Wednesday night, it's 7 p.m., Hour of Power. That's Central Time. Central yes. Time. Well, I guess we better get out of here. I want to thank all of y'all for helping us to bring hope, help, help and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all, and they're manifested through individuals as the Spirit wills. Thank God for manifestations of the Holy Ghost. How to See Spiritual Gifts Work in Greater Measure, a DVD by Kenneth E. Hagan. Keeping that fire burning on the inside of you. And a powerful CD by Lynette Hagen. Keep the fire burning on the inside of you. When we become born again, we are a brand new person in Christ. Plus, our new spiritual realities, a three CD series by Kenneth W. Hagen. All four CDs and the DVD can be yours for a gift of only $29 or more by calling toll-free 888-PRAISE-8. Or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, log on at rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.